Hey, boys and girls. Oh, wow. We're moving on with September. It's the 17th. And we're on our third fall lesson, are we? Teaching the right way here in Miss Kathy's class. MOG and I are so glad to see you. All right, let's. Have you ever played uh, Follow the Leader before? So let's play some right now. But what we'll do is we'll get in a circle. And one person will do something, do a motion or something. And everyone else does exactly what that person does. And then you come back here and we'll start up the video again. Now, as you notice when you play follow the leader, you have to be good at following and you have to be good at leading. There are different qualities that make a good leader and a good teacher. What are some of these qualities? You can discuss this among yourselves. Now, today's lesson tells how Jesus was a good leader and teacher because his wisdom came directly from God. Today's lesson, the scripture is John, the seventh chapter, verses 14 through 18, and then verse 24. The key verse says, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. John, the seventh chapter and the 24th verse. Oh, hi, emoji. He's come to remind us that the book of John is in the new testament so now it's prayer time and today you're going to choose a prayer leader and you guys will insert your prayer right here and then come back to the video here are today's words to know the first is feast a large festival meal festive meal rather there was a grand feast at the king's castle to celebrate his son's marriage. The second word is glory. Oh, mercy. Glory is not this. Hold up. Alexa, define glory. Glory is usually defined as very great praise, honor, or distinction bestowed by common consent, renown. As a verb, glory is usually defined as to exult with triumph, rejoice proudly, usually followed by in. As an interjection, glory is usually defined as glory be to God, used to express surprise, elation, wonder, etc. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for glory. Alexa, thank you. It's no trouble at tail. I mean, at all. Oh, she's got jokes. From the source. It's from the NIV version of the Bible. From John the 7th chapter, 14th chap uh, verse through the 18th verse and verse 24. Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach? The Jews were there and amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? So here's the background to that. Back in those days, everybody didn't just go to school. If you went to school after you were taught at home, then you had to have enough money to go to certain homes schools away from home so they were like they knew that he was a carpenter's son and not wealthy how did he get to go to learn all of this stuff he must be brilliant or what is going on so jesus answered my teaching is not my own it comes from the one who sent me anyone who chooses to do the will of god will find out whether my teaching comes from god or whether I speak on my own. Oh, that's true all the time. You need to know if you're hearing somebody 
talk about the Bible. You need to know something about it yourself by studying here in your Sunday school, a higher ground class, so that you know if their word lines up uh, with the word of God, then you know that it's from the word of God. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. It's another thing that we have to be careful of because there are a lot of people around here that speak about God or speak from, say that they're speaking from the Bible when all they're after is fame and uh, money and we have to be careful. So we have to look at things like, um, did have I learned that in the Bible or can I find that in the Bible? And if it's not, then you know that that person may be what they are calling a false prophet. We've talked about those before, right? Stop judging, Jesus says, by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. Now we're going to get to your lesson book version of the scripture. And remember the key verses, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. Wait a minute. I I kind of remember something like this in the Old Testament. Let's see. Oh, I, I remember. It had to do with David. Because remember when Samuel was supposed to find the king that, that God had chosen? And Samuel kept seeing all of these all of Jesse's great looking, strong looking sons. And he said, Oh, that's got to be the one. That's got to be the one. And God kept saying, No, that's not the one. You're judging by how they look. And that is not that's not who I've chosen. Teaching the right way is today's lesson book version title. Jesus and his followers were at a great feast. Early in the morning, Jesus went to the temple where he began to teach. The Jews were amazed. They could not believe that Jesus knew what he knew. Oh, they remember the men in the temple when he was a boy and he came to teach and ask very intelligent questions and they were amazed also. They said, this man has never studied in school. How did he learn so much? Jesus answered them. He told the Jews that the things that he taught were not his lessons. Jesus told them that his teaching came from the one who sent him. Who is that? Mm -hmm. Then Jesus told them that if anyone chose to do what God asked of them, then they would know that his teaching came from God. They would know that the teaching was not his own. Those who teach their own ideas are trying to get honor for themselves. But those who try to bring honor to God speak the truth, and there is nothing fake in them. Jesus told the people that they should stop judging or making decisions by the way things look. He told them to be fair and to judge by what was really right. Questions. What did Jesus tell the people about what he taught them? He told them that what he taught came from the one who sent him. Who was the one who sent him? God, that's right. What did the Jews think about Jesus' lesson in the temple? They were amazed because they knew he had not studied in any school.
That's amazing. The Contemporary Story for September 17th, 2023. Mr. Johnson prayed over how to teach his class about the life cycle of the butterfly. He brought caterpillars to class. Iris wanted to cry. She hated bugs. They were crawly, slimy, and gross. Mr. Johnson gave each student a caterpillar and helped them create little homes for them. Iris tried her best to follow Mr. Johnson's directions. Every day that week, Mr. Johnson spent class time talking about the caterpillars. But Iris wasn't interested in listening to his teaching. They're disgusting. Nicole <laughs> giggled and agreed with Iris. All right, class, let's check on our little friends. Everyone's caterpillars were crawling around. But Iris's caterpillar was gone. Mr. Johnson, something happened to my caterpillar. Do you see the shiny ball near the top of the box? This is a chrysalis. When a caterpillar is ready to turn into a butterfly, it wraps itself into this shell to change. Just for a second, Iris forgot how much she hated bugs. This was amazing! Questions Why was Iris upset? I don't like bugs and my teacher brought in some caterpillars. What happened to Iris's caterpillar? It had changed. It was turning into a butterfly. Did Iris's dislike for bugs change? Yes. For butterflies anyway. The end. Exploring the story in Ruby's lab. Hello everyone, Ruby here. I have a great experiment for us. Let's make a chart that shows the good choices versus the bad choices. Write some good choices on one side of the board and bad choices on the opposite side. Then discuss what makes the choices good or bad. Are you ready? I'll start. For a bad choice, I'll write not doing our schoolwork. Why do you think that is a bad choice? I can't wait to see your answers! Friends, make a list of the good and bad choices you make during the week and bring your list to the next class next week. Or you can always send them to me so I can see them. We can just share them between us at P.O. Box 74514 Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70874. Or by my favorite means of communication, by email, get your parents' permission, of course, to rubyredpanda at mail.com. And that's the Ruby Red Panda. I said Ruby Red Panda. Ruby Red Panda at Hey, did you know that yesterday was National, oh, no, International Red Panda Day? Oh, yes. I had a marvelous picnic with my family. It was a great time. So next year, remember it.
Oh, now it's time for some activities. Here's one in your book. I don't see the page number down here. Sorry about that. Read the sentences below that are related to, de to today's lesson. We're going to circle T if the statement is true and F if the statement is false. Not true. Number one, Jesus said that what he was teaching was his own lesson. True or false? False. Two, Jesus told the people that he taught the words of the one who sent him. True or false? True. Number three, Jesus told the people to stop judging unfairly. True or false? True. Number four, Jesus told the people that it was okay to judge others. True or false? False. And number five, Jesus' teaching, teachings were not learned in school. True or false? True. Now for today's word search, you're going to search for the words in the list. And what I'm going to do is you stop the video, fill out your answers, and see if you got found all of the words that are listed. Lesson review. The key verse Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. Where did our lesson come from today? John, the 7th chapter, the 14th through the 18th verses, and verse 24. The Jews were amazed at Jesus' teaching, as he had not been formally taught. He hadn't been to a regular school. You'd have to go away to go to school after you'd gotten older, somewhat older. Little children could not go to a regular school. Jesus declared that his teachings came from the one who sent him. And we know the one who sent him was his father, God. Jesus argued that those who do the will of God will know the source of Jesus' teaching. They will know that his teachings come from God. All right, boys and girls, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you're watching on YouTube, that is. And you can always write to me at class at mail.com or P.O. Box 74514, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70874. And you can also email M O G what M O G U R two looking at your emails this week. Don't don't say you're not gonna look at them. You're going to look at them. You know you can't help yourself. So remember to subscribe if you can, boys and girls. Get your parents' permission. All right, boys and girls. M-O-G and I have to go now. We'll see you next week, God willing, because we love doing this. We love you. God loves you too. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Bye-bye.